Hello, this is a Richard Litt Grand Piano made in 1901, 180 centimetres long. That's really one of my favourite pianos, as I've mentioned before on other videos. 85 keys, if you notice here, is no, not 88 keys, but you can get through all your exams or take them all without needing the 88 keys. Obviously, some musicians might need 88 keys, but um, it has ivories and they're in quite good condition. Um, they're not perfect and we probably try and make them slightly less yellow by buffing them, although they are quite shiny already. Um, that's the older lip logo um, that's an Art Deco logo, comes in after that. And I've had two of these in my house for most of my piano playing, most of my piano playing life actually, so I'm really particularly fond of them. Uh, if you look at the legs, there's really typical turned legs of that time. The casework isn't perfect, but generally quite good. Here we have um, you can see it's black. It's original, I think. I don't think, I think the whole piano is original, actually. There's, you see this line here, where it's cracked a bit. And this piano is being assessed on behalf of a client who's trying to decide what to do with the piano. Um, this top here is probably the worst part of the case. Obviously, it had something on it, got water spillage, and gone right through. I think this is original black, and I think the whole piano is original. Um, if you're familiar with lips of this age, most of them are rosewood, so it, not often you come across a black one and often they're refinished nowadays in black obviously, but beautiful rosewood, the original, if the rosewood ones, we've got examples of videos where we repolished them and uh, looking around this side that's pretty good, uh, right around the whole side is uh, in good condition, well there's a few blemishes, we can probably tidy that up um, or repolish the whole piano, but repolishing black takes about 75 hours for fr proper French polish um, and it can also obviously have a modern polyester finish too. The inside of the piano is in very good condition. There's a serial number, very often lost on lit pianos, unfortunately. Um, but this one, I think, as I say, it's all original, left, kept its serial number. Very often it's taken off when people restore the piano. Try to go quite fast so as not to waste too much of your time if you're watching. But uh, the strings here, now I think they're original by the size of the tuning pins. Um, and generally the felts. The client was thinking maybe the felts had been replaced at some stage, so not totally certain about that. But the size of the tuning pins, which is the way you gauge whether their strings have been replaced or not, is original. There's the bass strings. There's a good string line on these, so that's encouraging. So when the tuning pin's very floppy, it's got small tuning pins, and you're assuming that those are originals. Um, I must admit they're in remarkably good condition. Maybe they've been cleaned up at some stage because they're a bit brighter than I'd expect for that age. But um, none of the tuning pins have been knocked in either. That's an important factor. And I've tested them and they're tight. And looking under the piano, it's in samples in remarkable condition. A few cobwebs as you'd expect, but uh, nothing amiss at all here. Unfortunately, there is a spillage here. Um, it doesn't seem to be affecting the tone, but uh, it's cos cosmetic, really, but it's a shame when things get spilt in pianos. Obviously, you've got to try and keep liquid away from pianos. There is a sign of um, a slight sort of a slight crack on the soundboard there, not affecting the tone at all, just cosmetic. Obviously, if you restrung the piano, then you would redo that. There's the original logo of lip on the soundboard. Damper regulation is, is quite good. Well, I'm just putting my foot on the right-hand pedal. Now, there's one one there that's a bit slower, but generally working very well. And lifting up high enough, like the uh, wedge dampers to lift above the strings, clearly above the strings, and that, that would be fine. Perhaps we just add another millimetre to it. Frames generally in quite good condition. Obviously, we've redone lit frames before, uh, but uh, even the nice red colour is still there. There's no moth damage in the piano at all, which is encouraging. Um, one thing I noticed, which I haven't discovered, see, I don't think I've ever seen this on any piano. Uh, instead of having wooden um, set-off buttons here, they've got capstan style here, which uh, is the kind of thing you get on Beckstein grand pianos for the capstan, which is this capstan down here. Um, but that's, if you've seen that before, if you're in the trade, I'd be interested to know. Uh, but it's a good idea, I think, actually. Um, at least I think it is. I don't know why they didn't continue to do that. But uh, it seems to be a good idea. Certainly, occasionally you can get cracks or you can get broken um, set off buttons. So maybe that's a very useful thing to have. I notice there's lots of French chalk here, or sorry, um, talc, and I presume it is anyway. And, uh, so that's a sign that maybe somebody's worked on the piano or sometimes it was put on I think maybe as a moisture absorbent but we use it obviously for uh, 
lubricating and the, lubricating the centre. It does need a little bit of lubrication on the balance rail, but it's not terribly bad. I noticed that someone stuck this foam on here. I've no idea why. Uh, it doesn't. Well, maybe it was meant to be on this part. So um, I, I think we're going to have to probably um, put some more felt on on the stop where the action goes back to. Otherwise, it won't, the hammers won't be in the right place. Now the piano's had quite a lot of wear and one of the most remarkable things is that the hammer blow, that's the distance between the top of the hammer and the strings, is 61 millimetres, which is I think the hard, furthest I've ever seen it practically. Uh, so we've brought it up to 47. Now you see, see what a difference it is. 47 is probably about correct for this age of lip. We'd have to decide on the exact one that we want. Um, but so you can see that hammers have been pretty, pretty well used. Um, again, original I think uh, and they're a bit soft really so certainly changing hammers and then shanks and rollers these hinges here are a bit a bit on the loose side a lot of them one or two too tight as well but generally a bit on the loose side so um, rather than repinning and getting the exact tightness we would normally change hammer shanks and rollers as we've mentioned many times before and the, the rollers are getting a bit low so that that would raise the hammer height up a bit but not as much as that so I don't quite know why it's dropped so much as that um, and this has this typical lip lip spring here totally unique I think or well, maybe one or two other actions are similar this is Stuttgart so maybe I don't know if Schiedmeyer it's also Stuttgart had the same one I can't remember um, but certainly it's well thought of in the trade quite easy to adjust you just take this off bend it and then push it back on again obviously not as nice perhaps as a Beckstein screw or the screws on a lot of actions is very useful these are beautiful screws here by the way uh, so nicely engineered the whole of lip grand pianos is, I can easily eulogize about lip it's just such a beautifully made piano one thing I noticed that these back checks are unusually very worn and the hammers are coming back down and hitting them so the hammer butt is coming back down and, and just carving it out really and the bottom of this hammer here is very sharp there so maybe that's the culprit sometimes they're a bit they're a bit uh, rough here but it's not terribly rough it's about right but this is certainly very sharp that must be actually cutting into the into the felt on the back check and uh, that's causing it to get worn so it's easy to change the back checks we just screw, screw them off and screw new ones back on so listening to the tone of the piano, the hammers are obviously letting it down, but uh, round here, it's not singing like it should do because of the hammers. Too much hammer hitting the string basically, and it's too, too flat, needs to be less of the hammer hitting the string, and, and, a, and, a, and a better voiced hammer, and a stronger felt too. You can hear the quality of it. Listen to this break point here. If I was to play the notes, there's some oxidization of, of, of the leads there, by the way. We'll probably have to, yes, we will have to do something about that. They're getting close to each other. It's not something I picked up earlier, um, but they that's quite common in lips, actually. So we need to sort that out, and hopefully they haven't split any of the keys. Um, but uh, that's certainly something we often have to do on many grands, but lip grands seem to be one of the ones on the keys that need doing, so that's important. But looking at this break point, this piano hasn't been tuned for a long, reasonable length of time. It's about two beats flat. And a beautiful fruity tone down in the bass there. So here's a summary of this remarkable piano and uh, the 180 centimetres long, 1901, excellent age for lips and uh, leg room a bit on the low side perhaps if you're tall but 5.5 um, heights for the pedals, you could raise it up and 7 is sort of maximum as we mentioned before, comfortable I think, so you could, you could have more leg room that way. It's a family owned piano in, since the 1920s apparently, um, so I don't think I've missed anything out particularly the very tight tuning pins. Obviously, if you want them extra tight, you could replace the strings, but they're perfectly adequate. It was, it's reasonably in, in tune, not having been tuned for a long time. So that's encouraging. Um, and uh, just various other things, like the Unicorda pedal needs a bit of adjustment. Uh, but look at this hammer blow, 61. Uh, that will do effect touch remarkably if we brought that down to about 47, which I've shown on a couple of them. Um, and music's nice and long if you 
are used to putting lots of uh, music on, on your music stand, that's very helpful. Um, so I think that's everything really. The, 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 the weighting, oh, we did no, no, notice the oxidized leads too, uh, and general regulation it needs, but I didn't mention this here, but it's something obvious, and if we're going to replace hammer shanks and rollers, got to re-regulate the whole piano. So last of all, the weighting, um, it's 54 grams there, which is roughly correct, but then it suddenly goes very light indeed, because they're very light hammers, uh, and the, the, the hinges are, are, are swinging too much as well. So 37, 30, it should be about 52 um, at, on the note, 52 interestingly, 47 to 52, 55 maybe maximum, depending on whether you want a light or heavy weight, that's far too light really for studying on, but if you want an occasional player and want a light touch, that's possible. Um, but normally if we put new hammers on, we will ask the client what sort of weight you want. Remarkable break point. So I think I've said everything there. Um, I hope that's helpful. I'm just going to play the piano to see what it sounds like. So that's a rich lip grand piano, 180 centimeters long, made in 1901. And well, I've already done enough, enough superlatives to say it's an exceptional piano. You don't get better than this, in my opinion. But the hammers are letting it down a lot at the moment, and the, the touch also is not, not as controlled as you would get it if you redid the touch. It's, you can't play too quietly. It's a sort of minimum volume you can be confident about playing. Plenty of power in it. 85 keys, so if you want 88 keys, it's worth bearing in mind that this is not got 88 keys. It's such a resonant sound. It's an, it's, well, I've done the superlatives already, so I think you get the idea. The hammers are letting it down so much here. Again, not singing as much as it should. Thank you very much for listening. If you have a piano and you'd like it assessed and uh, with a view to restoring it, then please let us know. We'd be delighted to do that for you.